Well, a troubling number of Somali Canadians have been killed in Alberta over the past few years, and the vast majority of these homicides remain unsolved. Now the families of the dead are appealing to Somali Canadians in Ottawa and Toronto for help. They'll be meeting with community leaders in Ottawa tomorrow to tell their stories. Muna Ibrahim's brother Mohammed was killed in Alberta in 2008. Muna will travel from Toronto here to Ottawa to share her story. Good morning, Muna. Good morning. And the person organizing this event is Ahmed Hussein. He's with the Canadian Somali Congress. Good morning, Ahmed. Good morning. Thanks very much for joining me. Muna, if you don't mind, if I could start with you, could, could you tell me what happened on the night of your brother's death? Um, well, my brother uh, attended a birthday party at the River Creek Casino out in Edmonton. Um, with some friends, and a couple of guys came to the party and um, started a little bit of a commotion. They were fighting with a girl, um, and my brother pretty much went there in her defense and fought with these guys inside the casino. Um, the bouncers and the security ended up kicking everybody out, and these men waited for him outside, and they murdered him. How old was your brother? 24. Your brother's case was one of the few that resulted in a conviction. What happened? Um, in terms of its success? or That's right, the, the, the successful prosecution of, of his case. Well, um, from the jump, we were um, very involved in um, finding out what happened and reaching out to the witnesses and... Um, working with the RCMP and finding out what happened and giving them information, um, which was really helpful in connecting the dots and, you know, making this trial successful. Mm -hmm. um, and along the way, we had support from the community and organizations, and they were really helpful in um, giving us support and also supporting the RCMP in providing information. That's okay. what really happened. I want to bring Ahmed into the conversation now. How many other homicides involving Somali men in Alberta have resulted in charges or convictions? I, I think uh, <clears throat> Mohammed Ibrahim's case is the, the first that went all the way to sentencing. Uh, there's one that, a second case that's before the courts now, but that's about it. The rest are uh, uh, unsolved and they're getting cold. How many men are we talking about? We're talking about uh, more than two dozen. Uh, the number is uh, could be as high as 32. Uh, the confirmed numbers from the police uh, are uh, 26. Hmm. What do you think um, is behind the fact the majority of those homicides remain unsolved, Ahmed? I think <clears throat> it's not uh, what I think or what anyone thinks. In fact, last year, uh, around the same time, uh, a year ago, the former uh, chief of Edmonton Police Service Chief, Mike Boyd, uh, testified before the uh, Edmonton Police uh, Commission, and he uh, was asked the question why Edmonton has such a very low clearance rate for homicides, and his response was that it was due to the fact that they did not have enough money or resources to dedicate to homicide detectives, and he made... Uh, that uh, that contention and it's on the public record. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying um, very clearly, and we've been saying this for a while now, is for the Alberta government to take this issue seriously mm -hmm. and to heed the call of the Edmonton Police Service in providing more money to homicide detectives so that these cases can be cleared and to also have a very inexpensive task force that looks at the deeper mm -hmm. issues behind these killings. Just to be clear, though, the... The solve rate for the murders of 32 Somali men, one of whom yeah. has reached uh, the point of conviction, Yes, that's much worse than the average solve rate of murders in Alberta. Yes, that's what makes Why is that worse. the case? I, I think it's it's an, a number of things that are at play. I think there is uh, a perception problem in Alberta, uh, con which is connected to the fact that this community isn't seen as being an integral part of Albertan society. We've made a lot of uh, steps to correct that. Uh, we have improved the record of uh, cooperation between the community and the police, but obviously there's more room to grow. Uh, but it comes down to resources and also it comes down to priorities. I just don't think that the city leadership and the provincial government in Alberta 
has prioritized this issue and the signal that they send is that this is not a community that they mm-hmm. consider to be integral to the future of Alberta therefore that message gets seeped down into mm-hmm. seeps down into the uh, police services and others and therefore there's um, a negligence on this mm-hmm. on, on this issue Muna, I'd like to talk to you about the fact, and, and you can correct me if I've got the wrong end here, but is it true there were witnesses to your brother's uh, murder who were initially reluctant to come forward with information? Yes. Why is was, that the case? It was really actually difficult to even um, get them to testify um, or make a statement to the police, um, to the RCMP, because... Um, they didn't want to get involved in all of this. They 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 were feared. They feared their lives. Um, they didn't want to be labeled as snitches, um, which is uh, I guess a street term for you know uh, ratting somebody out. Um, and they just wanted to just stay away from from this whole issue at all. So it was really difficult to engage them and um, get them to help us out initially. Hmm. Even though they were Muhammad's friends. Like it, it was. Um, they witnessed something very horrific, mm-hmm. and they are, you know, scared. They they saw somebody that they knew die in front of their eyes, and I guess it. it I, I understand mm-hmm. that they could be fearing their own lives. Okay. Now that gets to the heart of this meeting in Ottawa. Ahmed, what role do you think Somali communities here in Ottawa can play in helping with the investigations of these cases in Alberta? I think there's a connection between a lot of these cases and Ontario because the uh, a lot of these young men are originally from Ontario. They also have family links and friends. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're just appealing. Uh, we Basically, the event is to enable... Um, more information to get into the community to uh, mm-hmm. ask for it's an appeal for information it's also an appeal to uh, to support the parents and it's uh, I just want to correct you it's not mm-hmm. a meeting just for the uh, Somali Canadian community it's open to everyone mm-hmm. and if we can get allies to assist in the quest for justice that is being carried out by the parents then we welcome them as well Muna what would you like to get across to the people who come to the meeting tomorrow um, I just would hope that um, people coming out are there to give, you know, psychological support um, and show that they actually are standing with uh, these families that are going through these kind of circumstances. Um, I know from personal experience it was really helpful that um, the community um, community leaders and organizations did assist us and give us their support. Um, and finding out what happened, and I just want to go there and do the same, um, just knowing from the personal experience how helpful it was. Thank you both for meeting with me this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Ahmed Hussain is with the Canadian Somali Congress. Muna Ibrahim is the sister of Mohammed Ibrahim. Mohammed was killed in Alberta in 2009.